Looking for simple, easy air fryer recipes? I got you. Today, all you need is your air fryer, some chicken, and five ingredients or less. Hey there, welcome. My name is Kathy, and on this channel, I like to get people excited about using their air fryer. And if you've been here for a little bit, you know that I recently went to Mexico. It was my first time ever, and we had a blast. It was a work trip, but a whole lot of play trip. It's hard for me to choose what my favorite thing was. Could be zip lining over the jungle or playing in the water. It was so amazing. But now I'm back, back to reality, and I'm always looking for super easy air fryer recipes. So today's recipes involve chicken. Three of them I just found on the internet, and I'm gonna test them out. I've adapted them for the air fryer and then I got two more that are actually in my air fryer cookbook There's like over 160 recipes in here. Almost every single recipe has a picture in it, too You can learn more about my cookbook at yummyairfryerrecipes.com. But for now, hey, I'm excited to test these out. You ready? Let's go. Up first is some air fryer teriyaki chicken. Your entire meal is just five ingredients This is about five pounds. You're only gonna need about one and a half pounds a quarter of an onion, and your favorite teriyaki sauce. I have another recipe where I made some homemade teriyaki sauce. I will link to that down in the video description below. In fact, I'm gonna link to all of the recipes down in the video description box below, plus all of the tools that I used today. So I've got my onion chopped up here. I measured out about a three quarters cup of teriyaki sauce. And of course, this is probably the grossest part of chicken thighs is all the trimming and everything. You just wanna cut these guys down into bite-sized pieces. And I have found that just like using scissors makes it so easy. Just make sure they're nice and clean scissors. These really are just regular scissors that I bought. Nothing super special. That fat does seem to cook off a little bit, but if it grosses you out, just trim that off. Or of course you can use a knife. You just wanna cut them into little bite-sized pieces. All right, there's my chicken. I just poured in the sauce, and unfortunately my camera was not going. And then, of course, the onions are optional too. The onions are gonna just add a nice punch of flavor. Go ahead and mix that up. Now, if you have picky eaters, you probably don't want them to see you cutting up chicken thighs. I'm, you know, I too am in the camp of chicken thighs look disgusting, but they taste so good, so. If you're in that camp too, I just give it a try, give it a try. I've got another recipe using chicken thighs in my cookbook that's so good. So I'm gonna just let that sit for anywhere from 10 to 60 minutes. Now we're gonna make up some rice. I love using my Instant Pot for rice. And all you need to know is you basically just need a one and a quarter cups of water or any type of liquid for each cup of rice. And depending on what kind of Instant Pot you have, oh, mine is very dirty, it looks like. I never use that rice preset. I just always run it for about seven minutes at high pressure. I like this model of the Instant Pot because it just automatically seals. So there's no guesswork in making sure it's sealed. Okay, now I've got my preheated air fryer. And you just wanna spread this chicken out along the whole pan, just to get it as much as you can into a single layer. Then we're gonna cook this one at 380 and we'll start with eight minutes. Once the rice finishes, I let it natural release, so it's actually been sitting for 19 minutes here. Normally just 10 is enough. A little more pressure to come out. And then you've got some perfect steamed rice. Okay, here we are at the halfway point. Oh boy, that smells so good. Just give it a stir and we will let it finish cooking. Okay, we are eight minutes in. It is a bit tricky to take temperature of these tiny little meat pieces. So another option would just be to like cut into them and make sure they're not pink. I'm gonna just throw this in for about two more minutes. And since this one just will preheat, I got it marked down to one. And here we go. That's looking fantastic. Look at how nice that's looking. Oh yeah. I'm gonna let that chicken rest right here. And then I've got my air fryer pan. There's still some juice in the bottom. I'm just gonna throw my frozen broccoli right there in the pan. And this one, I think I usually do 350 for 10 minutes. There we go. We've got rice, we've got chicken and some broccoli. Dinner is served. I'm curious if this tastes as good as like Panda Express teriyaki chicken. Mm, maybe. I like those onions in there. Mm -hmm. Just a tiny bit of crunch. That's good, I like it. Mm. Five out of five, recommend it. 
For Put sure. Mm -hmm. Five out of five, which is great because it's literally five ingredients right on this entire plate. Very easy. This recipe came from 30seconds.com and it was just called Easy Baked Chicken Thighs. Except this recipe takes like 45 minutes in the oven. We're totally gonna knock that down in the air fryer. You'll need about six to eight chicken thighs, some maple syrup, Dijon mustard, rice vinegar, and we'll use a little cornstarch to thicken up the sauce after we're done cooking. First, go ahead and salt and pepper your chicken. Now the recipe says to put it in a baking pan because I do have a sauce I'm gonna lay over the top. I'm gonna use the silicone air fryer basket because look how nice it fits right inside my air fryer basket. This is a six quart instant vortex basket that I'm using today. So now we're gonna make the sauce and for the sauce you need a half cup of Dijon mustard or I like to weigh it and that's 60 grams, a quarter cup of syrup or 60 milliliters or grams, and one tablespoon of rice vinegar. You could use red wine vinegar if you don't have that on hand. Then just whisk that up and I'm gonna throw in a dash of salt and pepper and then just pour that right on top of your chicken thighs. The good thing about having it in a dish is that's gonna save the sauce. We're gonna use it for later. The silicone pot, I should have showed you before I put food in it, but it has like ledges and stuff. So it just kind of helps lift it off the bottom of the basket. That way it's still gonna get some airflow right through this whole silicone basket. So place it right in your air fryer basket, then pop it right in your air fryer. And I'm gonna put air fry, even though there's a bake option. On these models that have all the different options here, it's pretty much just setting a temperature. So I just always air fry, and we're gonna do it at 400 for 15 minutes. Actually, this is gonna add a preheat time, so I'm gonna do 13 minutes to start off with. They are looking good. Since the airflow is still a little restricted, I am going to rotate the chicken, which is so easy to do in the air fryer. Finish up. All right, it's done. Looks good. Let's take a look at that internal temperature. For chicken thighs, you actually wanna get it a little bit hotter than regular chicken. It just makes it more juicy. So I'm gonna give it a little more time. And that is the beauty of the air fryer. It is so easy to just add on. Now, I forgot, this one has that preheat function. So I am gonna take out a little bit earlier. And this chicken smells really, really good. These are up nice and hot, which is right where I like it for chicken thighs. I'm gonna let these rest in foil. And now I'm gonna use this to make some sauce. Now just carefully pour all the juices into a glass bowl. That silicone is a little hot. And by the way, it's so nice that this is still clean and I just have to wash that. Now we're gonna wanna thicken up the sauce and I'm gonna share a little pro tip that my friend Renee shared with me several years ago. If you wanna thicken with cornstarch, you need to add it to something cold first. Otherwise it's gonna be really clumpy. So I just have a tablespoon of cold water. I added a tablespoon of the cornstarch there and I'm just gonna mix this up first. Just dissolve that. Then I'm gonna pour it into my gravy here, or my sauce, whatever you wanna call it. And <laughs> if I had a stove top, I would be cooking this on the stove top, which I don't. So I'm gonna mix it up good, and then I'm gonna throw it in the microwave. And by the way, if you'd rather use flour to thicken, you put flour in warmer things, and that makes it so it's not clumpy. So thank you, Renee, for teaching that to me years ago. And once that sauce is nice and blended, plate that chicken, place your sauce right on top of your chicken because dinner is served. Survey says. Mmm. That's pretty good. I like that. Good flavor. Five out of five. Five, five, five. This next one is amazing. It's found in my cookbook on page 71. It's called Rosemary Ranch Chicken. This is one of those recipes that you just always have just about everything on hand. So I've got my chicken here. You need some ranch, some red wine vinegar or lemon juice, Worcestershire sauce, and just a titch of oil. And the one thing I had to buy was some fresh rosemary, which is so worth the trip. So first make your marinade. You're gonna need a half cup of ranch or 120 grams, then a quarter cup of that Worcestershire sauce, two tablespoons of that red wine vinegar, a tablespoon of oil. I'm using avocado oil. And then for that rosemary, tell me how you do it, but I just usually rinse it out in water and then I just like pat it dry gently with paper towels. And then somewhere, I don't even remember where, it's said to like start at the top and just 
pull the little leaves off. It never works super awesome for me. It does take a tiny bit of patience, but we only need a tablespoon and I just absolutely love the smell of rosemary, so I'm okay to sit and play with it for a while. And again, I've never claimed to be a pro cook or a pro chef here, but I just kind of clump it all together and chop it up into little pieces. It just makes it taste amazing. And just pop that in the marinade and whisk it up. Oh, yum, yum, yum. It smells so good. Now I'm gonna prep my chicken. Now these are pretty thick chicken breasts and I want them to cook evenly, so here's the trick. Put some parchment paper down, just like regular parchment paper. Then I like to put gloves on and set that chicken out on the parchment paper. And then get another sheet and make sure that's centered. And see how it's thicker right here? I'm just gonna pound it down. You could use a rolling pin or whatever, but I really like this nice, heavy, like, pounder. It's meant for pounding chicken. And now you can see my chicken is about the same thickness throughout. So I'm just gonna pop this right into the marinade and do the rest of my chicken breasts. Now, of course, this is not required. You don't have to. It just means that skinnier portion of your chicken is gonna be more dried out. And personally, I'm not a fan of dried out chicken. And also the oil in this marinade is gonna just help tenderize the meat too. Now, I just have like three big chicken breasts in my bag, so that's what I'm gonna do. But you really could even do more with this marinade. You could also double this recipe and then freeze some for later. That works fantastic as well. Now I'm gonna pop this in the fridge. You're gonna want to let this marinade for at least two hours. The longer, the better. Just don't go more than 12 hours. Oh boy, um, I forgot something. That's okay, I will go ahead and add it right now. A teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. I told you, I told you I'm not a pro chef, right? We'll just make this work. We'll just, we'll make it work. This chicken is all done. And when I marinate meat, I like to pull it out and let it just sit for about 15 minutes so it can just start to temper. All right, I'm gonna cook this one. I'm gonna go with 12 minutes. We'll start there. Let this preheat. All right, it's ready. And remember the marinade has some oil in it, so there's no need to oil this basket. There we go. I'm noticing that this Instant Vortex Plus, like the shake reminder comes when it's like two thirds done with cooking, which is kind of interesting. But let's just talk about how beautiful that chicken looks. Give it a quick little flip. Oh my goodness, that rosemary smells so good. We'll let that finish. Okay, I've had this resting in the air fryer for a few minutes and internal temperature is right on track. Okay, rosemary ranch chicken. Ready? Mmm, mmm. Five stars for me, I love the flavor. How about you? Five. Mmm, -hmm. four? Uh, I'm good out of five. And Molly wants it, I already know that. That one's a keeper. This one I found on the Taste of Home website. It's Tasty Onion Chicken. I'm a little bit curious to see if my kids are even gonna like it. For this one, you just need a half cup of melted butter, Worcestershire sauce, ground mustard, and again, I only had to buy one thing from the store for this recipe, the fried onions, and of course, the chicken. Now this butter is gonna become our dredge. I'm adding that tablespoon of Worcestershire and a teaspoon of the ground mustard, and whisk that up. Another way to pound down chicken is to keep them in a Ziploc bag. You could even use paper towels. And just pound. Okay, so you do want to like a shallow dish for this little dredge mixture. And yes, you could like mix it this way from the get go. And for these fried onions, you just need about a three ounce pack. My store only had the six ounce. So I'm gonna put like half of this in a little sandwich bag. Then I'm just gonna crunch it right up or if you're super cool and have a food processor, that will work too, but I'm just kind of old school. And there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and preheat this air fryer and I'm gonna just set the cook time for about 12 minutes. Okay, here is our little mixture. I'm gonna just soak that chicken up there. Now I'm just gonna lay that chicken right into the crumbs and just crunch that oniony mixture all over. How easy is this? It's not staying on as well as I would like it. I'm really gonna crunch that in there. 
kind of feeling like I might need that entire thing of the French fried onions. I'm gonna set this aside and repeat. Oh, sounds like my air fryer's ready. And yeah, this is not enough. I'm definitely gonna crunch up some more of those onions. Okay, here we go. Let's add to that. Squish and scrunch. It might be because the recipe, it says four ounce chicken breasts, and I'm pretty sure these are a lot bigger than what that recipe called for. And also, this is not really sticking on. Okay, there we go. Okay, you know what, this third one, I'm gonna just set this one in the fridge and save this for later. I'm curious to see if refrigerating it is gonna help all that crunchiness stay on a little better. The air fryer is wanting me to pop the chicken in. You can see that like dredge has thickened up just because the cold chicken hit that warm butter. So that butter is starting to thicken up. I'm just gonna like, oh, flick it onto this chicken. Just get a little more of that butteriness in the chicken. Let's see how that does. Oh, yeah, that's messy, but hey, it's gonna work. Pull this out. Gonna plop these big boys in there. Since there's butter in that dredge, I really shouldn't have to grease this air fry basket. We will see what happens. All right, there we go. Now you can finish cooking. There we go. I pulled this last one off the plate to put in this dish for the fridge and like all of this breading came off. So hmm, I'm interested to see what's gonna happen. Now I'm just gonna pop that in the fridge with the other chicken. Oh, let's just take a little peek here. It is looking really good. All right, there's a little turn food reminder. Oh, wow, wow, it smells so good. Can you hear that sizzle? Let's see what happens. Is everything gonna fall off when I flip it? Ugh, okay, here we go, here we go. Yeah, it's kind of falling off, kind of falling off. That one stayed on a little better. Let's just do a quick temperature read on that chicken so we don't risk overcooking. All right. Okay, still have a ways to go. So we'll finish that up and I'm pretty sure we're gonna need more than four more minutes. So I'm gonna just crank that up to about six minutes more. All right, let's take a look. Oh, wow, wow. Goodness, I don't remember what I did differently to this one. Well, let's take a peek here. Almost, almost at temp. Very close. I like to get it kind of close to 160 and then just let it rest. In this case, I'm gonna just let it rest in this nice hot air fryer. It will just continue cooking a little bit without turning it on. And just be careful on this air fryer. That glass cover is a bit hot. There we go, it's been resting and it's more than done. Here's what breading was left and here's what happened when I tried to uh, move it with these silicone bands. That didn't work so well. Instead I used a fork, but still some of that breading is falling off. Let's taste test it. I think I shouldn't have added on that last couple of minutes of cook time. It's a little bit dried out, but let's see how it tastes. Pretty good flavor. The breading though, it's it's kind of soggy. Like I, I dipped my chicken in the breading that fell off. And it's just missing something, a little punch of something. Maybe it's just salt. This one, I'm just not sure. No, I won't make this one again. I'm gonna give it two stars, but let's see what the kids say. This has been refrigerating. Uh, it's not looking promising. And I don't know, let's see how that one does. I'm gonna see if having parchment paper helps solve that breading problem, but the breading problem actually got worse. <laughs> so yeah, don't do that. I'm just gonna throw that breading down on there and maybe the butter that's in it will kind of melt and put it back on the chicken. We'll find out. This time I'm trying the roast setting because I believe, oh no, it's still gonna preheat. So I don't think there's gonna be any change here at all. Oh, interesting. Oh boy. Oh boy. All right, what you think, little girl? I think like a four out of five. You think it's good? Yeah, it's pretty good, but four out of five. So. Okay, thank you. Mm. All right, easy chicken fajitas, page 91 in my cookbook. You're gonna love how simple and easy this one is. All you need is about a pound of chicken. I find it's a lot easier to slice up the chicken when it's just starting to thaw. So cut that up and then you need a bag of frozen veggies. That's right, now you can do fresh if you want, but 
Hey, I'm all about easy, you know. So just pour some oil in there and stir it around to coat all of the veggies and chicken. You can do it right there in your air fryer basket or just do it in a separate bowl. And then just throw in a packet of fajita seasoning and stir that around. You could totally do a homemade blend if you want, but like I said, I'm going easy tonight. And then pop it in your air fryer. Now, since I'm using frozen, it's gonna be a little bit longer and I'm gonna start out at a little bit lower temperature. So I'm gonna do 360 for eight minutes and you can see it's looking lovely, but obviously still needs some time. I'm gonna give it a stir and then throw it in for five more minutes at 380. Now check it out, it looks done. I love to use my instant rate thermometer to just double check on the doneness. I decided to give it three more minutes at 390 and there you go, bada bing, bada boom. Top this on rice and have fajita bowls or just do cute little street tacos. The family loved this dinner. Hey, question for you. Are you making any of these air fryer mistakes? Watch it, make sure you're not. And I have more five ingredient recipes for you right here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.